is Bob Powell, and today in Zero Talk, we're talking to João Almeida of the Koning Quickstep about his Giro d'Italia. Welcome back to a brand new Turbo Talks podcast. We are closing in on the end of a jam-packed short and cycling season. And while the peloton is on their final rest day in La Vuelta in Spain, we are going to look back at the Giro d'Italia today. And we have a very special guest to do that with. He is only 22 years of age. It was his first Grand Tour and he rode to an incredible fourth place finish on the general classification. Plus, he wore that iconic Malia Rosa for 15 days. It's a warm welcome to the Turbo Talks to a big revelation of this year's Giro, João Almeida of the Koning Quickstep. Welcome, João. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Thanks a lot. Well, uh, I'm pretty good, actually. <laughs> really happy with everything uh, for yeah, it's the last months. And uh, yeah, let's start preparing the next season. Already, did you have a bit of uh, off time the past week? Did you manage to recover a little bit? Yeah, actually I had a few interviews, but I could rest and I will still rest for one or two more weeks and then we just start training again and uh, yeah, doing the preparation for the next season. Because I think I saw you did a, a small ride yesterday. Was that your first ride back? Yeah, it was my first ride back. I went with a friend, just something short, you know, just just to, to ride a bike. I was missing pedaling and for sure it felt really good. You already mentioned you had lots of inter- interviews uh, going on. I even saw a bit of a, a what, what was it, like a Power Ranger pose? What was it? Was it on Portuguese television? Yeah, yeah. It was like a, we did like a comedy uh, video. And uh, yeah, the uh, that was a Power Ranger that came in. It was pretty funny, I think. <laughs> so that's all the crazy stuff that suddenly comes by uh, by being a big Portuguese cycling star, probably. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, me and Ruben, we both put uh, cycling in the newspaper again in Portugal and on the TV as well. So I think that's pretty good for cycling in Portugal and and for ourselves as well. Yeah, because let's not forget that uh, Ruben Guerrero obviously won that uh, King of the Mountain classification and won the stage. Uh, so yeah, it must have been the best Grand Tour for, Port- for Portugal ever. Yeah, I think... Uh, in terms of GC, I was in Giro. I think I was the best. Not in because there was still a guy in the tour. He was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I think me and Ruben we were both two guys, so I think that was pretty good. I think uh, we can be proud of that. So, so what do you think that means for Portuguese cycling in the upcoming years? Well, I think we have uh, some quality in Portugal. Uh, of course, uh, that I, I don't know a lot because we are, I'm always out of the country and racing. But I think there's a f- there's a few riders that have a lot of quality, especially young guys. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's really good. And and what we did now, I think it's really good as well to to promote that and also for the national team to to do more races. Uh, yeah, uh, international races. I think that's good for them. Yeah, because you mentioned a lot of young riders, but let's not forget that uh, you're still sort of like a young rider yourself. It's only your first season in the pro ranks. Um, and you already had like a really good stint in 2018 at the Baby Giro when you came second and you only lost, I think only because you got held up by a crash. Yeah, I had a crash on the last day. There were two stages. The second stage was a TT, and the first stage was a normal stage, like 100k or something. And the 4k to the finish line, there, were, there was a crash. I lost like 50 seconds. And uh, yeah, then in the end, I was second GC with 46 seconds or something. But yeah, we never know because it could have been different. But uh, yeah, for sure, it makes me think. And But I'm really... I'm really satisfied with the second place that uh, on that time. And and does wearing the pink jersey in the real Giro kind of make up for that? Yeah, for sure. I was not expecting at all to, to do that. For me, it was a big surprise. I mean, I knew I had good legs and my preparation was really good. But uh, yeah, turning that to wearing a pink jersey 15 days and the 4GC for me was really incredible. And I had a, a really, really good team. 
inside of me and they, for sure they did all the differences they were great i'm really proud to to make part of this yeah it must have been not easy to have that good of a preparation but talk about like your first year you started in the tour down under then you were already pretty good in the algarve actually working for remco uh, then there came that really long break how did you get through that and how did you manage to uh, keep preparing yourself for the big goal yeah, well, in Algarve, the last day on, there was a TT, and uh, actually I almost crashed and I hit my knee on the handlebar. So I had a few knee problems for a month. So on a month, maybe I rode the bike like six, seven times. And then my form was actually really bad. And uh, yeah, after that, I was just training, uh, you know, as much as I could almost and uh, to prepare the season. And then I just started really good we did a altitude training camp before Burgos was the first race uh, my feeling was really good there I think I had good data the group I think all the group from the team was uh, was really nice and uh, yeah then we started in Burgos and I think we did pretty well yeah definitely because you came third on GC in Burgos then you were, you were seventh in Tour de Lain, um, and then in Lombardia and suddenly after that was then when Remco had crashed, was it then suddenly like, oh, I might be the leader in the Giro? Yeah, Remco crashed in Lombardia. And uh, yeah, after that, we still had a few guys to do the Giro. But the problem was also the, the race after was Giro dell'Emilia. Um, Cataneo, which is in Vuelta now, he crashed as well. He broke a... Uh, vertebra i think on the lower back so i, I went to the giro because of uh, cataneo because he crashed and uh, yeah we had a lot of bad luck uh, the last months crashes all that stuff and i think the team uh, yeah the team since the since it started again i think we have been making a good job and keeping our head on the place keeping the focus and I think the results, the, they can talk now, I think. Yeah, for sure. So so you weren't supposed to ride the Giro, because I think a lot of people thought you were going to be at the Giro together with Remco, but you were not scheduled to ride, but Cataneo was. Yeah, exactly. I was supposed to do Vuelta, and then I came to the Giro. Oh, wow. It makes it even more of an incredible story to then be in, uh, to be in the pink for 15 days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So what was your goal going into the Giro? Did you have any expectations? Well, uh, uh, after after Giro dell'Emilia, when Cataneo crashed, uh, we, we, we did a good, really good preparation after that. Like a week after, I already knew I would come to Giro. So we did a really good preparation. I knew my form was good. And I had an ambitious like goal as a young guy to do like... Uh, I mean, so far in the one week, 10 days races, uh, I can do a good GC, but three weeks I have never done that. So I had ambitious goal to do top 10 GC and, uh, you know, taking it day by day. And yeah, then once I took the, the pink jersey, the goal was just to keep it one more day, one more day, one more day. And I was really surprised for the 15 days in pink. And then, and then was just trying to keep the focus for the GC and never give up. Because I think one of the maybe the most impressive stuff was even after you lost the pink jersey in the end, you still had a really strong two final days on the mountain stage with Cestriere still coming in fourth and that incredible uh, time trial into Milan still coming forth as well. So you really proved yourself to be a racer for over those three weeks for a Grand Tour in the future or not? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I felt always good. I think I never had like a, a bad day. I never lost a lot of time. I think on Salvio Day when I lost it, I think I was not strong enough. The, the other guys were just stronger. But uh, yeah, and then I lost the jersey. I, I kept the focus. And uh, yeah, I, I still felt good with good legs. And uh, and the last two days, I just tried my my luck. And uh, and I could gain some time, which allowed me to, to finish in fourth and not fifth. Which is, you know, a place is always a place. And... And we showed like our team spirit, our teamwork, which was incredible for three weeks. And the week, uh, we are all very happy with this. 
And, and I think you're right. B besides the physical challenge, you said it was also really a mental challenge that you really pushed yourself mentally. Uh, what, what was the toughest moment for you during the Giro mentally? Yeah, mentally is quite hard, you know, because it's full gas every day. Even if it's a sprint day, you know, the last 5K, it's really chaotic and uh, you can never lose the first positions. Otherwise, there's a gap. Then there's always a few seconds. But it's hard to, you know, mentally to be trying to be always perfect, you know. You cannot fail. And uh, yeah, mentally, the last days were quite hard. And especially, you know, after you lose Jersey, even, you know, for me it was amazing, but you, you get always a little bit sad because you, lo you lost it. But uh, yeah, in the end, I was really satisfied anyway, but it was really good, I think. So how was that moment going up to Stelvio and then at the moment of being dropped? Is it then like a big, big fight with yourself just to tell yourself, like, I can't give up, I can still make this? Or what went through your head on the Stelvio? Yeah, I mean, uh, that day I knew it would be really hard to keep the jersey. You know, I was not feeling super, super. My feeling was not bad. And uh, yeah, once I, it was like, I don't know, 10k maybe more to the top and they were ju they were going uh, in a really good pace and I knew I would never make it if they went that fast the whole climb and then I just tried to to put my pace and uh, until the top and I also knew there was uh, another climb coming as well but yeah I arrived in the top of the Stelvio I was completely exhausted and I was going full gas the whole climb And then I was just trying to recover as much as possible in the downhill on the descent. And then, yeah, the last climb was full gas. Me against my... Yeah, was actually the last climb was really hard mentally because I was already dead. <laughs> and, you know, you, you can never give up. And sometimes it's so easy to just give up and, you know, to stop going that strong. But mentally, I just, I, I just kept going strong. And try to hold it and not lose so much time because I knew there's still a GC place to to defend, and I think in the end we did a we did a good job. Yeah, I think it showed as well that you, you always kept fighting throughout the entire Giro, basically for every second. You you were always on like on the attack when you could, uh, fighting for bonus seconds. Is is that a style of racing that that you've always had? Yeah, I think so. You know, if I was feeling good, why not? To, to attack in, you know, in, uh, smart moves, not just spending energy, you know. I, I'm a guy that I don't, I'm not afraid to attack, but if I attack, it's on like a, a good place using my, my head, not just doing dumb moves. And I think in the end, it was really good. I, I attacked a few times when everyone had to spend energy. So if I spend energy, the other guys have to spend energy as well. So in the end, I never lose anything to try. And that, that's what I did and what the team did. We did a really good job, I think. So how, if you look back at the Giro now, how do you think that it has changed you uh, as a rider and perhaps also as a person? Well, I think mentally I came really stronger because I know it's, I don't know, it's three weeks. It's really hard. You have to to push yourself mentally and just go ahead of the like the barrier you have mentally like i think we we can always go further than what we think and in this year i really did that i did way more than what i expected and i think i could do so i think in the end i think uh, yeah mentally we we can always improve and i really improved in this year And I think prior to this year, you said like that you were looking forward, obviously, to your first pro season. You want to help the team wherever you can, learn and improve as much as possible. Um, it almost sounds a little modest now if you look back at your results, like how good you went this year. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, I really liked the, the team and, uh, you know, of course, cycling as well. This is my passion and I just do as much as I can, you know, being really professional Uh, the training, everything, uh, and yeah, I think this hard work pays off, and I really, I think I work really hard for to be in my best, and yeah, I think uh, I'm really, really proud of this. 
And, and if you look like you're in the Koenig Quick Step, maybe a team that is um, from origin more focused on classics and one day races. And now are they sort of like transforming now into a GC rider or how is it to be a GC rider on that team? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, on this Giro, I, I always had a team in, in the side of me, on, you know, for the positioning, crosswinds, uh, on the climbs as well. Uh, yeah, I think I want him this fourth place as well. It's not only mine, but it's from all of us. And I think I think the team was really good for, for like a GC. And uh, I think they are really strong and in the end they can they can do everything, I think. If you're strong, I think you can be strong almost everywhere. And, and is it like for maybe for next year now, when you look, you're in the, obviously in the same team as Remco Evenepoel. Um, do you think you guys can go to a Grand Tour together or should you be a leader in a separate Grand Tours? Do you already think about that? or? Well, I don't think much about that. I'll just... If I go with him to a Grand Tour, I mean... Was just, I mean, I, in my opinion, he's stronger than me. So I would be, you know, I would be very proud to to work for him and for the team. And uh, for sure, you know, he 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 can make history and good results. And uh, I'm proud to make part of that as well. So I think I'm not very worried about it. I just just want to keep uh, evolving and you know giving my best. And I think in the end, everything will will be okay even if I work for him or one day I have my opportunity I think it's fine and uh, I like Remco as well I think he's a really good guy so I think we don't have a lot of uh, problems with that I think that the Peloton might are going to have a lot of uh, problems when you die when you guys are going to team up more in the in the Grand Tour so that's uh, that's trouble for them I think <laughs> yeah I think in the end there's two cards you know uh, we can play two cards me and him if if, if I'm good enough so yeah I think uh, I'm still young so I, I will still I will still keep my feet on the ground as well I, and just keep working hard to to keep these results and the form and yeah we'll see what, what the future brings what was the moment um, what was the most impressive thing that you've seen Remco do on a bike so when did you thought like oh my the hype is real he really is that good was there a certain moment that you can remember i don't uh, i think uh on the day he crashed in lombardia he was really strong that day like really strong but uh, yeah all the races he did before you know he won every single race gc whatever at least the stage he won as well i think that's really impressive and He's, he's really strong mentally and physically, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see him in a Grand Tour, Grand Tour as well. Yeah, I think everyone will be excited for next year. Um, I want to go into some fan questions because a lot of people send in a question uh, through their text uh, social channels. But before we do that, uh, I quickly want to remind everyone that while we're talking about the Giro and the Big Jersey, our listeners also have the opportunity to get a feel for what it's like to ride up seven iconic climbs in Italy in the Malia Rosa Challenge from Tux. So if you go to tux.com to subscribe or start a free trial of the Tux training software, and you can jump on your Tux Smart Trainer at home, you enter the Malia Rosa Challenge, and then you can see what it's like to ride up those iconic climbs like the Stelvio, like the Zoncola and the Gavia, amongst others. So go check that out on tux.com. But for the Turbo Talks fan questions that were coming in, we had a question coming in from Pura Fideert and they wanted to know which race would you like to ride best and why? Well, actually, I think Giro. I, I always liked Giro since I, was, since I watched cycling. And uh, for me, it's a really nice race and I just love the atmosphere. It's not for this result. I always liked Giro before. And for sure now I like more. So I would say Giro. Okay, Giro. And do you have any special connection with Vuelta as well as being more close to Portugal? Well, I don't really have a connection, but if, for sure I would like to do it as well. Also a tour, you know. A grand, I think any Grand Tour I would like, one day I would like to, to make. Okay. Next question from... Uh, Joao Carvajas and he wants to know did you learn something from the experienced riders in your team like Alaphilippe 
or haven't you spent much time with them? So what did you learn from the experienced riders? Yeah, I just uh, some rider I just rode in the training camp. We never raced together, but you know, with Julian, you I learned that you know you have to suffer yeah, and it, like explosive things uh, and the mindset as well. Uh, that I mean, I think I think I learned with everyone, every single one. Yeah, I think they're all important. Someone teach me something like Casper, Bob, everyone, uh, Michael. I think I, actually we have a really good team spirit and team and we yeah we learn with each other a lot yeah I think that's um, another question from Pupada and he wants to know where do you train during the off season well normally at home and uh, we always have a training camp in Calpe uh, to do some preparation and also like deal with team stuff like you know the kids everything photos and we also do a good preparation there, but normally it's at home and there. Okay. Uh, I've got three more questions for you, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, Kiyo Sagan wants to know, what's your advice for junior riders? Well, I think I really have a long test, long things for that. <laughs> My advice is just to, you know, keep calm, trying to evolve, of course, uh, work hard for it. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, sometimes they want to be like Remco and jump from the junior to roll tour immediately, everyone. But, yeah, take it easy, learn. And if you work hard, you have the results and you can make it with no no worries. It, is that also that you're referring to, like, that maybe the extra year that you spent at uh, Hagas Berman in 2019? Well, maybe after 2018, you could already go up a level and you deciding, oh, no, I want to stay another year to in, to develop myself? or Yeah, I think after 2018, I could go. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I stayed for one more year because I was still, you know, I was young. Yeah, my 2019 season was not great. It was not my best season. And uh, for sure, you know, it makes a difference as well to, to pass the World Tour, but I still could make it. And uh, and yeah, I think that was that was really good because uh, I think that team was was really good for me. I learned a lot with that, with them. And uh, if it was not uh, with what I learned there, I'll we'll never be the same here. Okay, uh, two questions more related to to life off the bike. Uh, Simka wants to know what's your favorite movie. That's quite hard, actually. Uh, I, I have to say Fast and Furious. I think. And which one? How many are there now? Nine? Yeah, I think nine. Yeah, I've watched them all. So <laughs> that's all the nine. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> that will get you through a grand tour if you just watch those. <laughs> um, and a lot of people actually asking. It's not from someone in particular, but a lot of questions coming in. If you have a girlfriend? No, I'm single. <laughs> Ooh, I think the female listeners will be really excited about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it's going to be a uh, time to wrap this up. Thank you for your time. Um, if we're going to look ahead to 2021, what can we expect of you? What do you hope? Well, you can expect me to just, you know, be the same guy, just work really hard, do my best, and hopefully uh, discuss a few races and, uh, yeah, a happy kid, I would say. All right. Awesome to hear. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, we're going to wrap it up, but not before. A quick reminder to listeners to subscribe to the Turbo Talks podcast wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you tell a friend and leave a five-star review on iTunes. It's an easy way to just to make sure other cycling fans don't miss out on hearing from great guests like Xiao. So thanks again for joining us, Xiao. Enjoy the rest of your off-season. Do you have anything planned for the next two weeks? Well, with this COVID situation, it's quite hard, so I'll just, uh, yeah just rest and enjoy as much as possible with not taking any risks with this situation. That uh, sounds perfectly uh, sensible and uh, perhaps another couple of TV shows that you're booked for or is that over now? Yeah, well, just watching Netflix. I have a few series to watch, maybe The 100. Uh, yeah, I'll try to, to find a few more. <laughs> I've watched so many of them. <laughs> Do you watch the Vuelta a little bit as well in the meantime? Yeah, of course, of course. I never miss Vuelta, yeah. <laughs> I never miss Okay. 
were the legs hurting watching uh, those guys going up Angli Roo yesterday? Nah, nah, my legs are pretty good actually. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not them, but mine were, were okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of your off season, and we can't wait to see what you have uh, in store for next season. So, uh, thanks again for joining us. Thanks a lot, Rob. Nice to meet you. All right. That's it. Thanks you all for listening. Make sure you enter that Malia Rosa challenge on Tux.com and ride up those iconic Italian climbs on your tax trainer. And make sure you never stop cycling. This was Rob Pau with Joe Almeida of the Koenig Quick Step. Stay tuned for the next Turbo Talks. <laughs>